Hi, this is Corey McCarthy, and welcome to a new episode of Fit, Formidable, and Fantastic. That's right. Go F yourself. And happy Friday. Now, I have had uh, my inbox and uh, messages flooded with a, um, a constant request, and that is to do a video on creatine, which is a very popular um, nutritional supplement um, especially in the, uh, in the sports and athletics world. So I wanted to do a video that's sort of all encompassing and I'm going to, I have a very long list of notes here that I'm going to go through. So please, uh, bear with me as I run down all of this and I'm going to hit on, on what creatine is, what its benefits are and how you should, you should dose it and, uh, any, um, things you should be aware of warning wise. So Let's, uh, let's go through this. First of all, creatine is formed by three amino acids. They are arginine, glycine, and methionine. It is a compound that supplies the body cells with energy via formation of adenosine triphosphate, or ATP. Creatine can be synthesized in the body uh, by obtaining those three key amino acids from your diet, but athletes might consider supplementing creatine for its notable performance benefits, as would vegetarians and vegans for documented uh, cognitive improvements, for instance. Now, um, let's get into some of the benefits of creatine. I want to start out with the uh, most popular uh, usage for creatine, and that is under the umbrella of uh, strength and muscle benefits. Creatine has been shown um, to offer strength improvements when combined with resistance training. One, three, and 10 rep maxes uh, were 8% greater in, in those using uh, creatine versus those using a placebo. Um, average weightlifting performance was 14% greater than those using a placebo. And increases in bench press one rep max improved up to 45%. And overall performance in the bench press improved to 43%, but no lower than 3 to 16% improvements, respectively, in those using creatine. Research has also shown that consuming creatine with protein and carbohydrates, both pre and post workout, leads to greater overall muscle and strength gains uh, versus. Doing, dosing in the morning or evening. Um, furthermore, significant decreases in serum myostatin levels have been witnessed when supplementing uh, creatine uh, while engaging in resistance training. Now, I've done a video in the past um, discussing uh, myostatin, uh, but in a nutshell, myostatin is a protein in humans and animals produced primarily in the skeletal muscle tissue. Uh, sorry, skeletal muscle cells, um, and uh, animals that are deficient in myostatin or though or those provided some kind of a blocker, a myostatin blocker, um, have significant, significant larger muscles. And this has also been observed in humans with mutations in the myostatin genes. And so thus, by decreasing one's myostatin levels, one could potentially increase both mass and strength uh, more than without said reduction. Moving forward, documented effects on, um, on hormone levels with creatine consumption. When combined with resistance training, uh, diet non-dependent, uh, creatine was shown to raise intramuscular IGF-1 levels by 61%. Uh, dosage in this particular piece of research was 0.25 grams per kilogram of lean body mass for the first seven days, followed by uh, 0. Uh, 0.06 sorry, uh, grams per kilogram of lean body mass for the remaining 49 days of this study. Um, in other words, a loading phase and then a maintenance phase, which is something I'm sure all of you have heard about with creatine before. Um, now, for those who don't know, IGF-1, or insulin-like growth factor 1, is a hormone similar in structure to insulin. It plays a major role in both growth and anabolism in both children and adults. And thus, raising or optimizing your IGF-1 levels can be beneficial to muscular development. Creatine supplementation has also been shown, uh, has, sorry, has shown no changes in testosterone levels, despite uh, popular uh, theory. Uh, or popular conjecture, that is. But 
dehydrotestosterone levels, or DHT, have been increased by 56% after seven days of loading at 25 grams per day and remained at 40% above baseline after 14 days of maintenance dosing at 5 grams per day. And this was also versus a placebo. Now, for those who don't know, um, DHT is a potent hormone. Um, testosterone converts in very small amounts to DHT, uh, 5%, generally speaking, and DHT cannot be converted to estrogen via aromatase. Um, in development, uh, DHT is responsible for the formation of male genitalia. It's also responsible for male secondary sexual characteristics such as a deep voice, hair patterns, uh, sex drive, and sexual function. Um, it can also lead to a harder looking physique via lower water retention, improved fat loss, and it can lead to increased strength gains. Um, moving forward. Um, <clears throat> When loading creatine at 20 grams a day for six days versus a placebo, those taking the creatine noticed a reduction in both post-workout and resting cortisol concentrations. Now, cortisol is a steroid hormone produced in the adrenal gland, which is released in response to stress. It prevents the release of substances that cause inflammation, and you may think that this might be a good thing, but bear in mind that muscle growth requires an inflammatory response from exercise. Um... Cortisol has also been shown to break down fat in research, but in other instances it has been shown to suppress this breakdown. Nonetheless, prolonged elevation of cortisol levels can lead to protein breakdown and muscle wasting, which is no bueno, as you can imagine. So creatine's effect on cortisol is a good thing, or can be. Now moving forward, documented uh, and potential health benefits from uh, supplementing creatine. In vegans and vegetarians, um, taking creatine versus a placebo, there were notable benefits uh, um, noticed in word recall, uh, re reaction times, and working memory. So I think based on that, it's very advisable for vegetarians and vegans to ensure that they're getting uh, their creatine, um, even if by supplementation. Um, it, just for the memory capacity and the uh, mental and cognitive health of, um, benefits alone. Uh, furthermore, in the rodent model, um, I want to put that out there. Rodent model, it's not the human model, but it's it's still the ro but but still very interesting. Improvements in overall health and longevity have been witnessed uh, when dosed with creatine. This suggests uh, proposed benefits for human uh, aging, uh, but further research obviously is going to be needed in the human model. Um, Furthermore, creatine treatment, both short and medium term, can improve strength and performance in muscular disorders such as dystrophy, as well as pain and exercise capacity in people suffering McArdle's disease. Uh, it's also shown promise in slowing the symptoms of Parkinson's disease. Now, that's really the benefits uh, of creatine, um, both performance and health. Um, I want to move now into uh, safety and dosage. Um, because I'm sure this is also something that's really strongly in the minds of people perhaps considering creatine supplementation or people who already have been taking creatine. Creatine is one of the most heavily studied supplements for effectiveness and safety. According to the European Food and Safety Authority, um, supplemental doses of 3 grams a day are unlikely to pose any health risk. And despite a common myth that's been long, uh, it's been long held actually, long-term oral creatine supplementation has not been shown to impair the kidneys of healthy individuals. Um, just be careful when supplementing creatine while taking caffeine and or ephedra, as there have been reports of stroke in athletes when they are consuming all three together daily for a six-week period. Um, uh, furthermore, also ensure that when you dose creatine, you're in taking at least 64 ounces of water per day. Um, and that's the minimum. Uh, research has uh, shown that when creatine intake is coupled with carbohydrates, creatine stores are increased. Thus, it is optimal to take your creatine with carbs if your diet allows. Um, furthermore, um, as a dosage recommendation, the EFSA, as I, as I mentioned before, suggests 3 grams per day, but the research on athletes has been higher, uh, 5 grams a day sometimes with loading phases of uh, 20 grams per day um, for a week. Um, so you might consider perhaps if you're um, 
So my suggestion basically is if you're just beginning creating supplementation, perhaps start with a week of loading at 20 grams per day and then fall back to a maintenance dose of 5 grams per day uh, for the performance and uh, performance benefits of creatine. Um, that being said, uh, research shows that a 5 gram dose of creatine monohydrate post-workout increases muscle and strength better than dosing pre-workout. So once you begin your maintenance phase of 5 grams per day, it appears optimal to consume that post-workout on the days that you train. Now, on your rest days, you could consume your daily 5-gram dosage with a meal of your choice containing both carbs and protein, or at the very least, protein. Um, and one final thing I want to note that uh, has um, also been asked to me quite a lot about creatine, and that is uh, water retention in creatine. It's a very popular concern, especially amongst women. Creatine is osmotic, and as such, it pulls water into the uh, muscle cells. Supplementation has been shown to lead to total body water content increases of 6%, um, which, is, which is not that significant. But bear in mind that 95% of this is intramuscular water. Uh, in the case of creatine, and thus it should not concern you um, with regards to significant loss of definition, which would instead be attributed to uh, subcutaneous water, for instance. And for that reason, I would suggest that you worry less about the water retention from the creatine intake and seek out other potential causes that are present in your life, like factors in your diet. Um, really, that's uh, all I have to uh, to say about creatine. Um, I, I try to be as comprehensive with this as possible. If there's anything you'd like to ask or need clarifications on or um, want to discuss, please drop it in the comments below. I'd, I'd love to uh, discuss it with you. Um, otherwise, um, I do highly recommend uh, creatine supplementation um, beyond what you'd get from diet. Um, I do think there's a lot of benefit to it. And, uh, and the benefits exceed just athletic benefits. They go into the, uh, into the health realm as well. So um, that's my recommendation. Um, anyway, uh, I want you all to have a good weekend. I'll see you guys on Monday for a uh, regularly scheduled episode. Until then, stay fit, stay formidable, and stay fantastic. I will see you around. <laughs>